Hello, my name is Brother Johnny, and I'd like to welcome you all to the Lord's Supper. Today is Friday, July 3rd, 2020, and the topic of discussion is, Many be called, but few chosen. Matthew 20, 1 through 16 says, For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour, and saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. Again he went about the sixth and ninth hour, and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out, and found others standing idle, and said unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? They say unto him, Because no man hath hired us. He saith unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. So when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto his steward, Call the laborers, and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more, and they likewise received every man a penny. And when they had received it, they murmured against a good man of the house, saying, These last have wrought but one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? Take that thine is, and go thy way. I will give unto this last, even as unto thee. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is thine eye evil, because I am good? So the last shall be first, and the first shall be last, for many be called, but few chosen. In this passage, Jesus gave a parable in which the master of the vineyard hired laborers to work in his vineyard. Some he hired in the morning, some he hired midday, and some he hired at the eleventh hour of the day, but they all received the same pay. This is an indication that a laborer in the vineyard should not be boastful or prideful of how long he's labored in the vineyard because the master of the vineyard will count him as equal to the laborers who are brought into the vineyard to labor at the eleventh hour. Let's take a look at who the Bible says these laborers represent. 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 23 says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk, and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal, and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? I have planted Apollo's water, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. And according to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Let no man deceive himself, if any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. 
And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore let no man glory in men. For all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours and ye are Christ and Christ is God's. In this passage, the Apostle Paul reiterates the words of Jesus when he explains that it is carnal to have pride or be boastful of our pastor, preacher or teacher. We can begin to see that when Jesus said in the 20th chapter of Matthew that many be called, but few chosen, he was referring to the priest of God who labor within the body of Christ for the benefit of the members. Before we continue, I must go off script and deal with the few verses in this passage that are taken out of context and could possibly be used to deceive many. 1 Corinthians 3, 13 through 15 says, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. I have an uncle who I love dearly, who is a Baptist preacher, and doing a biblical conversation about keeping God's commandments, he read these verses to show me that even if his works are burned up and he suffers loss, he still will be saved. When he presented these verses to me, I did not have enough biblical knowledge at that time to give an immediate rebuttal, but just as when Peter had the vision of the clean and unclean animals, I walked away from that conversation knowing that these verses we're not saying that a person could not have any works and still receive everlasting salvation. I went home and I read the entire third chapter of 1 Corinthians a few more times. And while I was driving on the freeway the next day and still pondering these verses, I realized that the context of this chapter is not referring to every man's works, but the works of the laborers in the vineyard, which are the priests of God. While I was driving in traffic, the Holy Spirit brought to my remembrance a few other biblical verses who spoke plainly concerning this issue and clarified these verses for me. In John 15, one through six, Jesus said, I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. In this passage, Jesus explained that he is the vine, the father is the husbandman, or master of the vineyard, and the members of the church are branches that proceed forth out of the vine. If the branches are not producing fruit, even though the laborers of the vineyard are working diligently, Jesus explained that these withered branches will be gathered and cast into the fire to be burned. This explains how a minister can work diligently and some of his works be burned, but he himself can still be saved. Let's allow the prophet Ezekiel to weigh in on this same subject. Ezekiel 33, one through nine says, Again, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon the land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman? If when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning, his blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword come, and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned. If the sword come, and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. 
So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. In this scripture, God explains by the mouth of the prophet Ezekiel that the salvation of the minister is not directly correlated to the salvation of the members of the church. As long as a minister does the work that God has commissioned him to do, even if some of the members of the church are unfruitful and find themselves in the lake of fire on judgment day, the minister can still be saved because he did his job. Now we can go back on script to see how God called a whole nation to priesthood, but only few were chosen. Hosea 11 and 1 says, When Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. This scripture explains that the whole nation of Israel was called by God when he brought them out of Egypt, but for what purpose were they called? Exodus 19, 1 through 8 says, In the third month when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. For they were departed from Rephidim, and were come to the desert of Sinai, and had pitched in the wilderness, and there Israel camped before the mount. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bare you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people, and laid before their faces all the words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord hath spoken, we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. Now we can see that God called the whole nation of Israel to priesthood, and they agreed to answer the call. Hosea 4, 1 through 8 says, Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel, for the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. By swearing and lying, and killing and stealing, and committing adultery, they break out, and blood touches blood. Therefore shall the land mourn, and every one that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beast of the field, and with the fowls of heaven, yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Yet let no man strive, nor reprove another, for thy people are as they that strive with the priests. Therefore shall thou fall in the day, and the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night, and I will destroy thy mother. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. As they were increased, so they sinned against me, therefore will I change their glory into shame. In this scripture, God reveals by the mouth of the prophet Hosea that the nation of Israel blew the mission of being priests of God because they were increased and they sinned against God. Joel 2, 28-32 says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will shew wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. In this scripture, the prophet Joel reveals that God will pour out his spirit and call a remnant of deliverers out of Jerusalem. Acts 2, 1 through 21 and 37 through 41 says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, 
they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together, and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marvel, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Pergia, Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. It shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, and on my servants and on my handmaids I will pour out in those days of my spirit. And they shall prophesy, and I will shew wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire, and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about three thousand souls. In this passage, Peter revealed that this event was the fulfillment of prophecy spoken by Joel. He also informed the men and women standing before him that the promise of this prophecy was unto them and their children and to all the Israelites who were far off, even as many as the Lord shall call. We can see that although the nation of Israel rejected the calling of being priest unto God under the old covenant, God still chose to call his priests out of the nation of Israel under the new covenant, but this time only a remnant will be chosen. John 6, 70 and 71 says, Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that shall betray him, being one of the twelve. In this passage, Jesus reveals that he chose the twelve apostles out of the nation of Israel to restart his priesthood under the new covenant. Even though he knew that Judas would betray him, he still chose him to serve a purpose in the plan of God. John 15, 16 through 19 says, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you, that ye love one another. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own, but because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. In this passage, Jesus confirms to his apostles and disciples that they did not choose him, but he chose them and ordained them to bring forth fruit. 
From the time that God called the nation of Israel out of Egypt to be his priest until the time that Jesus chose the 12 apostles and a few disciples, the majority of the nation of Israel were Pharisees, Sadducees, or practicing paganism. Therefore, only few Israelites were chosen by comparison to the total number of Israelites in that day. The same problem persists even until this day. The majority of Israelites don't have knowledge of who they are and are still cavorting with pagan gods. Other Israelites who do know who they are still don't know whose they are and are enamored with culture and nationality. Therefore, God cannot choose them. Only the few Israelites who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ have been chosen to be the priest of God. 1 Peter 2, 6 through 10 says, Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light which in times past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which have not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. In this passage, Peter explains to the remnant of Israel that they were called by God out of darkness and chosen to be his priests. Jesus himself acknowledged the disparity between the vast amount of work to be done in the Lord's vineyard and the small number of laborers. Matthew 9, 35 through 38 says, and Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Even though God only elected a few Israelites to be counted worthy to be the chosen priest of God, Peter gives good advice concerning how we should handle our calling and election. 2 Peter 1, 1 through 11 says, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us, through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you, and abound, they make you that shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, if the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So far, we've discovered that when it comes to the priest of God, many be called but few chosen. Now let's take a look at the same comment, but in a different context. Before you move on to the next video, if this video was a blessing to you, don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button to support this ministry. Our goal is to upload new content every Friday before sundown, Central Standard Time, for you to enjoy. Thanks for spending this time with us. Now let's take another look 
at how many be called, but few chosen.